you're telling that plant grow it's your time to shine do you be you gardeners and homesteaders it's a beautiful day i guess spring is going to come really early this year we'll see but there's a couple things i want to talk about today and one of them or both of them as a matter of fact are common mistakes for your seedlings when you're getting them started it's something that i've talked to a few people about this year and i've heard a number of things about and so we're going to get into that because it is time for me to take the next step in my seedling game things first is we've got to get these tomatoes out here for this process they're starting to get pretty good we got some true leaves on them so that's a good sign we're doing something right we're only going to mess with two of the three trays for today so there's a lot of different tomatoes going on here and we'll talk about those coming up we got it about four varieties here i believe we've got roma tomatoes here um, they've all done real well and these are actually seeds i saved from last year so we definitely need to thin those out a little bit and then we've got honest abe tomatoes going here We've got uh, geranium kiss dwarf ind indeterminate tomatoes here. That's a mouthful. Um, homesteader tomatoes. And then we have a row of cherry tomatoes. So I don't do a lot of these because I don't really need to grow a lot and they don't sell really good. So just a couple extras to keep on hand. Um, the homesteaders are a semi determinant. So whatever that means. Um, and then the Honest Abe's, they are an indeterminate tomato and the Roma's are a determinate tomato. So before we get started, I do want to say that I plant both determinate and indeterminate tomatoes in my garden. I rely on my determinate tomatoes because I get a big flush all at once. Um, and then the indeterminate, I kind of the, the, the slow burn as long as I can keep the disease off of them, which is a trick for sure. But that's for a later date. Um, so we do an intermittent a mix of both and like the semi-determinant I'm gonna be honest I don't really know a whole lot about what that is but we'll figure that out um, I'm not overly concerned about that I grew them last year and they didn't do very well so I'm gonna give them one more shot I just kind of wanted to use up the seeds but when the tomatoes are this size and you're starting to get your true leaves like this it's time to start fertilizing you can see that all of the tomatoes have a true leaf to some extent um, some are definitely bigger than others, but this is an indication that it is in fact time to start fertilizing them, especially these Romas over here. They're just, they're going hard. So we want to go ahead and get them a shot of fertilizer. And this is the first thing that I've talked to people about and heard a lot of people that do wrong is fertilizing. All right, so we're going to take our trusty water can. I'm going to fill it up with water. And then I'm going to show you how much fertilizer I use because the first watering is crucial or the first feeding is crucial. You don't want to kind of beef it up a lot and feed it. Now, this is a one gallon watering can, I believe. And that's I mean, it's important because if you're using a five gallon watering can for like a lot more, then you definitely need to be careful. But I'll show you how much I use and what I use to kind of get them going. And then you can kind of you know adjust from there and then each time we're going to step it up more and more before i get to feeding though i definitely need to thin these out and i just come through and i pick the healthiest one and the one that's closest to the middle of each cell to clip out so like for instance this one right here we're going to clip this one out and then we'll go around and we'll kind of do each and every one of them this tray is not bad because the pack of seeds I bought really didn't have a whole lot in it. So uh, I couldn't put but so much in. And when I did the Romas, I wasn't sure if they would germinate or not. So I put a lot in each cell, as you can probably tell when we get over to them, how much, you know, there's in each cell, how many are growing. See, like this one's all jacked up right here. So, I mean, it's not really that messed up. You can just do that and it'll open up, but we already have one here that's open and it's doing good. So we'll just cut it. Just leave it there. It'll dry up, go away, whatever. So we'll go through and do these. Um, I do want to show you the Romas though. They got, I mean, look at that. I had no clue if they would go because I saved the seed. So I was just kind of sprinkling them in there and 
So I gotta clear all that out. We're gonna use this fish fertilizer to get it going. And so this is literally all you do for a gallon of water. Just a little bit, just a splash. So that's gonna be enough to get it started. Now you wanna mix it up a little bit and then just give it a light watering with it. And that'll be enough to get it going and then you can watch it for you know a couple days. And what I do is actually I watered these the other day so they're a little bit too wet. But I wanna go ahead and give them a push so what I'll do is I'll water them and then I'll let them sit for probably about a week until they get pretty dry again. And then I'll water them again and then I'll fertilize them after that. So I've already put that dry fertilizer down, the Osmocote that I was telling you about in a previous video. And just an update on that for the regular watchers, I emailed the company about if they had microplastics in the beads for the Osmocote and Basically, the consensus is there could or could not be. They've been switching over to a fibrous material and it should be biodegradable, but they're, work, they're phasing that out. So until I can find a better option, I'll continue to use it but cautiously. So that's already on there. So every time it waters, you water it, it'll start to release fertilizer into the soil as well. So you're getting like a double bang for your buck. And this fish fertilizer is just a quick shot of nitrogen to push some growth so that it can feed more. Now I do this outside and you can see I'm in the shade. So this will help with that too because they're not even used to being out in the sun. I don't wanna put them in the sun right now because they still have to grow under my lights for another probably about two to three weeks before I can think about up potting them and then moving them out. So we wanna do it out here in the shade also so it can off gas some of the stinky smell and then that'll help. So we'll give it a light watering and then we're gonna move on to the next one. Good. So the second thing that we that I see and I talk to a lot of people about their seedlings that they have issues with is up potting. So up potting is something that is not crucial for everything. There are actually very few things that I up pot as far as vegetables go and tomatoes and peppers are one of them. And so today we have this tray of peppers here. As a matter of fact, I got two trays, but I'll show you. So we have these, and these are about the size in which I'd like to start up potting them. Uh, the roots are not coming out of the bottom yet, which means they're not root bound, so that's good. But a lot of people like to up pot way too early. They just, they get going and they get excited, and I, I don't blame them, I would too, but you know, you gotta let the roots fill the container. And so if we pull one out, if I can pull it out gently enough, you can see that this right here is just, the roots are just hitting the bottom of the cell. So this is ready to be up potted. It's not root bound yet, so the roots will continue to grow out and therefore the plant will grow bigger. It's got a couple sets of true leaves. It's been fertilized a few times and it's ready to go. Not to mention this is two months old. Peppers take forever. The biggest thing with up potting is just do it when it's getting bigger. Be patient. Be very patient. What's the point in using a seed tray if you're not going to fill up the seed cell with, with, with roots? I mean, I've seen people repot stuff that's, you know, super tiny. I've seen things get really root bound. And if I had to pick one of the two, I'd rather go with the root bound method than the teeny kind because you're just wasting all of that soil, all of that water in that seed cell. So if you're going to up pot them, let them sit for a while and then up pot them. And then I, the next thing is don't put it into a seed starting mix afterwards. Now, once you up pot them, you're telling that plant grow. It's your time to shine. Do you be you. And so we don't want to put it into a seed starting mix. And I have a mix right here that is just um, sifted potting soil. So I sifted all the big chunks out of it. And it's good because it's got a little bit of organic material. It's very, it holds a lot of water, but it also has fertilizer built into it. So at this point, I don't have to put that granular fertilizer anymore. I can just add my fish dilution every once in a while to it and I'll do it periodically. And so once I up pot it, then I don't just go crazy and fertilize all the, all the time 
you're going to let it settle and you're going to see it grow because what's going to happen is the roots are going to say, hey, it's time for me to go somewhere else. And once they start growing, then you're going to get the growth up top. So if it looks like it's stagnant, generally what's going on is the roots are growing and then you'll get the top growth and it'll go back and forth like that. Definitely recommend getting some kind of big container like I have to hold your soil in because it just makes it easier to just get a scoop and go. And I fill it about halfway. And then you wanna make sure that you're like for peppers, especially you just wanna make sure that they're sitting right flush with the, the top of it. So once you do that, then you can fill around it and then your plant's good to go. So the roots are, you know, they don't fill up, but so much in, on the, as a um, diameter of the, or the circumference, it's not even a circle. So the perimeter of the pot, but it only goes down to here. So you can fill up all of this and grow all of this. And I should be able to do that within, I'd say probably a month. I should be able to start filling that pretty good and my peppers will grow exponentially. And then we're gonna get into trimming them, but we're not gonna worry about that now. You just wanna grow them and you wanna get them nice and healthy. And so we just take it and I'm just gonna fill it, you know? I'm gonna make a big old fat mess, whatever. Um, a lot of times if I wasn't filming this video, I'd keep the pot in between my legs so everything would just fall back into it. You know, everything's money, so. And then just like that, you are totally potted up and ready to grow out your seedlings. So at this point, I have probably 130 of these to do. So I'm not gonna do them all on camera. I'm gonna save you from that. But what I'll do is I'll do a batch of them and then I'll water them. And then as I water them, the soil is gonna settle some more. And so I top off, cause my goal is to get as much soil into this pot as possible because again, it doesn't do me any good if this doesn't have the soil in it. So, and then once it settles again, you should be left with about just a, maybe a quarter inch of space in there. And so I leave that in there. I don't fill it up to the surface once it settles again, because when I water it, it'll let the water pool up inside of it and then it can drink it slowly instead of it just pouring on the outside of the pot. And that can be a real issue, especially if you're watering these in the house or anything like that. So um, we still have some time to go on these, but just like that, it doesn't take long to repot and you're good to go. And just to show you what I mean about you don't repot everything, everything back here is, you know, lettuce, bok choy, Napa cabbage, uh, Brussels sprouts, all of this back here, even my onions and broccolis and all that stuff. I don't repot any of those. I don't up pot them. I just let them sit in there and get comfortable. And if you're worried about it and you think you need to up pot, it's okay to do so, but I wouldn't use it as a main method because what it's doing is it's gonna shock your plant. You know, just what we did there from me pulling it out and just dropping it in, it's still gonna shock it because you're rubbing the roots, you're moving it, you're pulling the plant from the roots and out of it and you're exposing it to the air and that's gonna shock your plant. So you wanna make sure that if you don't have to, you don't, but sometimes you just gotta do it. And with peppers, I mean, dude, they've been growing for two months now and you see how big they are. Imagine if I put them in the ground at that size in June, it would be like August before I'd even begin to think about getting a pepper. So we want to stay on top of that and get them as strong and healthy as possible. So, you know, just be careful. And then once you get them in the new pot, you don't have to water them as often at first because there's, there's more, there's less roots to more dirt. So you can take your time watering it. A little update for the garden out here. We have been planting. So next couple of videos, we should start walking around and showing you some of the different stuff we're planting. Uh, we're doing, ooh, I can feel it on my, my bald head. We've got um, basically the whole garden planted. And as usual, I put more in the ground than I thought, but I had extras. So we're gonna go through it. And I think we're just gonna have some really good weather for spring this year in our area, so we're gonna go with it. But um, everybody, know these mistakes and I hope it helps you. And I hope that your gardens are growing strong and hard and you're getting ready for spring because at this point you're a couple weeks away.